What's up everybody? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com. And today I'm gonna show you a quick little trick that I use to get fills and ghost notes to trigger properly while using drum samples on your snare drum. If you've tried trigger and ghost notes before, you know it can be a huge pain in the butt, but this tip is gonna make it super easy. So here we have our main snare track, and then this is our snare sample track, and I have an instance of Trigger 2 loaded on it. And by the way, you don't have to have Slate Trigger for this. If you have a different drum trigger program, the same concept will apply. But anyway, if we listen to a section of the drums here, So our snare is sounding really cool, and we have triggers set up so that it is triggering properly during the main drum part. But let's check out what happens when we get to this drum fill here. So that whole first section of that drum fill was not triggering at all. And you could really audibly hear that when the drum sample dropped out and it was just the natural drum. So let's solo up our sample track and see what we can do to fix that. By the way, the samples I'm using, I have the Disaster Snare and the Oak Snare. Both of these are available for sale over at bettermixes.com along with a ton of other drum samples. I have over 15 different kits here. You can buy each individual kit, which has a kick, a snare, and a pair of tom samples for only 15 bucks, or you can get the whole bundle for 100 bucks. And I also have one that's totally free. So if you're in the market for some new drum samples, be sure to check these ones out. But anyway, let's get back to our mix. So let's tweak a few settings inside of Trigger to get all of these hits to Trigger. Okay, so by cranking up our sensitivity and bringing our detail way down, we have all of these triggering pretty well. But there's one problem. Let's see what happens after this fill. With these new settings we have, the bleed from the kick or the toms or whatever else is triggering our snare sample. So what you might do, and what I used to do, is I would go in and write automation for the sensitivity and the detail anytime there are ghost notes or fills or anything like that. But ultimately, that can kind of be a pain in the butt. So here's what I do now. I have the second track here, which is just a duplicate of our snare sample track, and it has the same samples loaded into it, but we have our detail dragged way, way, way down and our sensitivity pretty high. Now all I have to do is anytime there's one of these fills or ghost notes, I just go to my main sample track, chop the fill, and drag it down to this new track. So now if we listen to both of them. So now we have this roll triggering perfectly. And because we only drag down right where it's playing that fill, we don't have to worry about any missed triggers on the bleed. So ultimately, I'll just go through the song and anytime there are ghost notes or fills, I'll just chop them and drag them down. Here you can see a good example with some ghost notes. Things like that are a huge pain in the butt just trying to do it on a single track. And another bonus of doing it this way is it gives you more control over your ghost notes. Once you get a little farther into the mix, you might find that you really can't hear the ghost notes as much as you want to, or maybe they're sticking out too much. Well, now you have a fader just for your ghost notes and your fills. So we can just bring those up or down to fit exactly where we want them. And yes, it can be a little bit of a pain having to go through and chop out all the ghost notes and drag them down, especially if there are a lot in the song you're working on. But I still find it's a lot easier than the alternatives. And just taking a little bit of time to do that can really make a big impact on the final mix. And also, just as a little bonus tip here, sometimes I'll do more or less the same thing even if I'm not using drum samples. For instance, on my live snare track, a lot of the time I want to use a gate on that to cut out a lot of the cymbal bleed. But much like with Trigger, it can be really, really difficult to get the gate to open for all those ghost notes. I use Oxford Drum Gate, which is like the most brilliant gate in the world, in my opinion. I did a whole video on this. I'll link it up here. But even with all the technology that goes into this thing, it's still a huge pain in the butt dealing with a lot of ghost notes. 
So again, I just make an exact duplicate of my snare track. Oops, except without the audio. And then on this one, I would turn the gate off and just go through and drag any ghost notes down. So give this a shot next time you're mixing drums with a lot of ghost notes and see how it works for you. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And like I mentioned before, if you're in the market for some new drum samples, head on over to bettermixes.com to check those ones out. I'll also put a link in the description down below.